right, so uh, this is a talk on Gutenberg. I'm Brandon, and uh, let's get talking about Gutenberg. So, oops. What is Gutenberg? Gutenberg is first and foremost an idea. It's treating our content as a composition of blocks. And what I, what I mean by blocks, I mean, you can, you can think of certain building blocks you've had as a, as a child and built things. It's, it's similar to that concept. Um, here's a wireframe that, um, that shows a paragraph block followed by a gallery block, followed by a quote block, followed by another paragraph block. And this is what I mean by, by blocks. Here's a view of those same block types in an editor. Hopefully that's somewhat readable. The, mo mostly the, the point is to get the shape, the shape of things. So we have a paragraph followed by a gallery and so on. And here is the result rendered for readers uh, with those same blocks. <clears throat> so today our, content, our content in WordPress is divided or is expressed uh, by special cases. So first we have, we have media, which, uh, which is used for images and other approved assets. Then we have embeds, which, uh, which refer to external, external content in, uh, allow us to include external content, excuse me. Then we have short codes. And if you're not familiar with, with short codes, they, uh, they're a way to, another way to insert content, insert special content into your content. So for example, uh, in WordPress core, there is a playlist short code where you'd express the word playlist in square brackets. You just type, type it out. And then you would type an IDs parameter and you have to find IDs of the things you want in your playlist, like audio clips. And then you would specify those IDs. You're typing all that out. And, um, and that's how that, that works. You also, a lot of plugins will use those as, as ways to uh, make available additional special kinds of content that you can insert. <clears throat> then we have featured images, which allow us to select images to be featured. We have excerpts, which, uh, which allow us to provide a summary for our post that's displayed in multiple places. And, and then widgets, which, which are used for expressing content that falls kind of outside the, the post or your page, uh, the, the, act, the page content. So this would be like your sidebar, your footer, and so on. These are all different languages. These are all different ways of, different things we have to think about when we're expressing our content. That oh, we need something that's involved and delivered via short code. We have to think about what that short code uh, is. We have to think of what it's named, what its arguments are, these sorts of things, and that that's troublesome, uh, or can be, and uh, and all those different ways are different ways of of thinking. What if we could use a single language? What if we could unify all of these languages into one, a language of blocks? Uh, to me, that sounds pretty good already, but why does that, why does it matter? The first, the first reason is a general topic of focus. So focus as a writer, actually, could we move that? Oh. I guess. Um, focus as a writer. So if we, if we simply use blocks, we aren't necessarily having to, we can reduce the number of times we have to kind of change our mode of thinking around, you know, I need this kind of content. Oh yeah, I have to go over here and I have to, I have to change this or I have to go look, look up something and make sure I'm providing the right, right thing. Or if I want to do something completely custom using custom HTML, um, that, that, that's also a different mode of thinking than if I'm just writing, able to write smoothly in the rich, in a rich editor. And so that all, all of that has a tax, is a tax we pay on our focus. So the idea is that if we can use blocks, if we can use uh, a single way of thinking or at least a single entry point into how we express our content, then, uh, then we'll be able to maintain our focus as writers better. Additionally, blocks, blocks help us say what we mean. We, the ideal is that, that we'll provide meaningful blocks that, that don't require so much 
thinking to grab. We say, I need this kind of thing. I'm just going to go grab this block, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put it in my content and fill it out. Meaning also gives us some, uh, some additional benefits. So with, since blocks will ideally, and we can make this happen, uh, explicitly reflect the type of content we're creating, uh, it's better for maintenance because your co-authors and also maybe your future self six, six months down the way or even maybe a month, month away won't necessarily go back to some custom HTML that you wrote and wonder, you know, I felt really clever when I did this the first time, but why did I do it this way? I don't remember. Or it just doesn't, it doesn't have, once you've forgotten, it doesn't have inherent meaning. HTML has some meaning, but it doesn't, it doesn't have as much meaning as we can provide at the granularity of blocks. So blocks are the idea. That's, that's the, the main idea behind Gutenberg is, is pretty simple. So where's Gutenberg today? We've, the community has, has developed, has been developing an editor. So bringing first the, the idea of blocks into the editor, it's a good first step. And uh, before we talk about more, I will do a review of, uh, a review of available block types. I'm slightly hoping I can get away with the cheat, which is I'm kind of going to be listing things here, but I want to talk about them. So the first blocks we have are for document structure. The first is heading, which defines the document outline. It's your H1, H2, H3 that, that actually define your semantics of your document and, and the outline. Then we have a subhead block, which, which I believe is, is made more for a replacement for the excerpt that will actually act, allow us to specify a, a, a summary or a sort of a, a deeper subheading for our, for our document. Then we have our text blocks. Uh, paragraph, the paragraph block is actually very foundational to Gutenberg. We start with a paragraph block. We create, um, <clears throat> we create things and often we will, our next block will be a paragraph block. Then we have lists, which are textual lists, uh, unordered, ordered lists like you have in HTML. You have quotes for attributed quotes, so you can offer a quote and say who, who it came from. It offers a number of styles. We have pull quotes, which allow us to take quotes out of our articles and sort of entice potential readers with them. And then the verse block, which I was very glad to see that there. We talk a lot about code is poetry, and it is, and poetry is also poetry, and it's nice to be able to write it in WordPress in a block. Here's an example of the verse block. And it's, it, it basically, it's, it's similar currently, it's similar to a paragraph, but allows you, has, has different, um, different interaction, so when you hit enter, it doesn't necessarily go to a different paragraph. It will, it will allow you to uh, write verse a little, a little more cleanly. Next, we have the graphical blocks. Uh, we have a block for a single image. We have a block for expressing the meaning of a cover image. So we, uh, when we use that block, we're, we're providing the additional meaning that this is a cover image for our article. Then we have the gallery, which allows us to select. This is sort of a uh, portal into into WordPress media and allows us to upload or use, use things that are already in the media, uh, in WordPress media to uh, display a gallery and it will uh, auto, automatically lay out the gallery in, an, in a nice way. And here's an example of the cover image. Cover image also supports a caption. All right, next we have media blocks. Media blocks offer audio, video, embeds, there are so many embeds. I started looking through the blocks and I believe my, my vague memory is that there are 20 different sites that are explicitly supported and then there's also a generic embed block which, uh, which allows you to specify external resources from any site. Here's an example of the YouTube embed block. Let's bring WordCamp US to Phoenix. All right, and then we have formatting and layout. So uh, things you'd expect, like pre-formatted pre -formatted text, you can express as a block. You can express code as a block. Text columns, so just multiple columns of text. And tables. <clears throat> and here's an example of the table block in the Gutenberg editor. And finally, uh, we have supporting, supporting blocks. So we have a custom HTML block for the times where 
you know, despite our desires to have blocks that have meaning for all of our content, occasionally we find that that's not the case. And we can provide custom HTML for those. We can also use the classic block, which is, is the, a version of a, kind of like a version of the classic editor in a block form. I don't, in my experience, it, I'm not sure it's one to one uh, between the classic editor and the classic block, but it's very much like that. And it's a tiny, um, if you know under the covers, uh, WordPress editor uses, uses tiny, tiny NCE as, as a rich editor, and that's what classic block has. Uh, then we have a separator block and also a read more block that will allow you to take maybe a more brief portion of your article and divide it and separate it from a portion of your article that has maybe more details than you think most people would like, but you'd really like to make them available for those who are interested. And it allows you to click that link and then those details would be shown for the interested parties. Here's an example of the custom HTML block as is. I think the, the thing I'm most excited about about these kinds of blocks is like right now, this isn't, this isn't super, this isn't syntax highlighted. It's not, you know, we, we could make some improvements, but people are actively uh, making PRs and, and that sort of thing for, for improving this, for, for making this a syntax highlighted uh, experience that we're, we're used to seeing when we use other uh, HTML editors. So these are just some of our building blocks. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what's available. Now, when we're, when we're writing with Gutenberg, we have, uh, we, we basically insert, edit, move, and remove blocks. We're just working, we're working with blocks. And the sum of that, the, the result, isn't, isn't, um, isn't stored in another place than, than we normally store our post content. It goes to the same place we store our post content today, and it's saved as valid HTML. So even if Gutenberg does not load, uh, load the content that we're saving, it's valid HTML that can be read, read by a browser. And for people adopting Gutenberg, uh, if you open a post that you've previously authored with a classic editor and with a Gutenberg editor, the pre-existing post is converted. It's currently converted into a single large classic block. And I think, I think maybe we'll explore making that more granular in the future, but that, that I believe is how, how it works today. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Oh, that that is also true. That there is a there is a classic editor plugin that you can install. So then, when um, Gutenberg is a first class part of WordPress, that you can express by installing this plugin. When you want to edit posts, you want to edit you want to edit by default in the classic editor. So that, that's right. Thank you. All right, so let's, let's talk about some feature highlights. These are simply features that I personally have worked with and find, find interesting. Now, the first is autocomplete. This, in, in practice, this is an autocompleter. So when you're at a par in a paragraph block and have a forward, and type a forward slash right away, you get the opportunity to start autocompleting blocks right there. So, so this made me feel immediately better when I was in the editor experience. Writing, writing myself, that I can, that I'm not just stuck and I have to go use a mouse and select the right block. I can, I can continue keeping my hands on the keyboard and select the block I want. The more you type, the more this is narrowed down. So these are not, these are just the first ten options. As as, as you type, you get the next ones, next ten that are narrowed down, and, and so on. And, and once you hit enter, it'll actually replace the current paragraph block with the block you selected. And there's a lot of work being done around uh, accessibility, both to make that more accessible for people who need it, and then also, at least personally, I, I really like keeping my hands on the keyboard as much as possible, and I am very interested in helping, helping out with that part of the, uh, the editor. Here's another, this is a really, really cool feature. Uh, it is the ability to use, to, to save, to create a block, and then save it to be reusable throughout your site. So in this case, we've added a quote block, and then we're, we're converting it to a reusable block. You can 
See there's a convert to reusable block menu item there. Once that's done, you can, you can actually insert it in other places. You can insert it multiple times in your own article. Maybe there, there are some things that actually do bear repeating um, in the same post, and you could use that as a, as a way to as a way to do that repetition, and you can insert things in new posts. So here, here's how you would select that reusable block, and here's how it looks once it's inserted. Another feature that I think is really cool that harnesses some of the meaning we have uh, with blocks uh, is that we have an outline of an article here, and it's 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 defined by the heading blocks in the article. And if you, you can actually navigate via these. So if you had a very large, very large content, you can select your headings and, and navigate to exactly the section you want, you want to be in, or at least in, in the neighborhood of where you want to edit. And um, that, I think, will come, come in very handy for some people. So those are just some of the features. I'm sure there's, pl there's probably plenty I've missed, but these are some things that stood out to me. and I decided to share those. So where's the community taking, taking Gutenberg? We have the editor, the editor is being developed. What next? Our, fir our first step is to, is to get the editor to a place where we believe it's the a minimum viable product for, for becoming a, a first step for a block-based editor in WordPress. That, uh, I, have a, I have a link to this in my references, but that's currently being tracked on GitHub. The tech lead for, for Gutenberg has created an issue uh, that with listing the things that, that we need to, that he believes we need to get done first. And uh, it'd be good to follow along if you're interested. It, I, I actually haven't been able to read all the things there, but it looks like we're pretty, there are many, many more things that were done on that list than, than things that weren't. So that, that was nice to see. The next step would be merge proposal. So someone will need to make, make a proposal to merge Gutenberg into WordPress 5.0. And then finally, it would be actually doing the work of merging it into WordPress 5.0 5.0, and uh, getting, getting community feedback along the way. The next steps after, after WordPress 5.0 is to follow with using blocks for full site customization. So blocks don't just apply to your post content. Blocks could apply to your entire site layout, like your sidebars, your footers, your, your headings. Uh, anything, anything you have that defines the regular site layout, we can, we can model that with blocks. And we've been exploring foundations for how to make that, make that real. Now, the following, what I'm going to show you next are prototypes. They may have no bearing on the uh, the final, or may not may not the final product for this may not resemble these prototypes. But um, here's here's what we've been working on. So the contrast here isn't 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 great, but this is a page showing imagining how we could go to a page and select a an overall page layout. And that sounds I, I really. I really like the idea of being able to visually see these different page layouts and, and choosing one, and then being able to go forward here and have placeholders for blocks where, where we can just start filling them in. It doesn't necessarily take as much of a, a mental load, or at least for me, if I have, have a particular layout in mind, but then my mind gets set on uh, maybe a particular subsection of what I'm creating, I might not always remember about, oh, what, what was I going to do over here? So I, I really like the idea of having, having a placeholder, like on, on the top here, we have a featured image placeholder, and it, rem it would remind me, say, hey, select a placeholder image. And here's, here's a shot of that after the placeholder image is, is selected. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I couldn't quite hear you. I, I'm actually, I actually don't know what that is, to be honest. Um, so I, I don't believe so is my answer. Um, this would be more, we're, we're kind of iterating or, or riffing on the idea of how, how we would do site customization. So WordPress has, has the customizer right now. And so what would, 
what would that look like when we can use blocks, I think is the, the bigger question that we're, we're asking right now. Um, if that helps, sure. Thank you. All right, so, so next, let's talk about outcomes and then some opportunity. So the outcomes are sort of a, a more of a before and after imagining of how WordPress will, uh, will work. There are things that might change about WordPress after Gutenberg is merged. So short codes, which we talked about earlier, it, I, I would argue it's a better user experience if we can replace those short codes with blocks. But, and, and so that, that's, the, that's the ideal option. But there is a short code block available. And I believe we'd, we'd still like to provide backward compatibility for, for those who rely on short codes, which is, in my perception and experience in the community, is many, many people. So, uh, so that's the story of the short codes, though. It would be better to replace them with blocks. They give you a better, more resilient user experience. But you can still use short codes if, if that's what you need to do. Now for themes, there's, I've perceived that there's, there's been some, sometimes some worry about, well, what, do, what does Gutenberg mean for my theme? Uh, existing themes will continue to work. Uh, the, so existing themes will continue to work. And then you can, if you want to target Gutenberg, there are Gutenberg features you can leverage. For example, you can specify theme colors that appear in the editor when you're, when you're sort of a highlighted set of theme, theme colors that you can uh, choose from when you're, when you're setting colors via the editor. You can, specify, you can specify styles for the editor, which you'd say if, if a theme renders a particular block a different way, in a really creative way, maybe you want to change how that block is edited in the editor, so you'd want to restyle that with CSS so it looks a lot like what you're going to see on the front end. And themes will be able to add editor styles in that way. Um, themes can also add fonts. And, um, and then I think an, a, another feature that we've seen demoed with blocks often are uh, wide, wide images and ability to take an image and say, hey, I want this to be full, you know, left to right, uh, wide image. And that's, that's another feature that's explicitly supported by Gutenberg. And I'm, I'm sure there will be more. So post formats. So post formats, my understanding of post formats is that post formats exist to allow us to give WordPress some hints according to the, about the nature of our content that we're writing so that when they're styled on the front end for, for readers, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to style those in, in, a, in a better way because we know what kind of content it is. Now, the idea is that expressive blocks, that block, just providing blocks with, with really exp expressive capabilities will allow us to explicitly say what we want and reduce our need for post formats uh, but we, we currently are continuing with post, post formats for backwards compatibility. Now, for meta boxes, meta boxes are for those who aren't familiar, and I'm actually currently just getting more familiar with these. Meta boxes are a way to allow you to specify um, additional information about your posts, <clears throat> and a way to allow you know the writer to express those things, and then you can leverage those on the front end when you're, when you're rendering your post for readers. Um, now, Gutenberg supports, or does provide support for meta boxes, but meta boxes, there are some meta boxes that, that are not self-contained that depend on the structure of the current editor. Like maybe they're doing lookups in the DOM, in the you know, HTML, the document hierarchy, uh, doing lookups and finding things outside of their own box, those, those things, Gutenberg can break those things because the editor, the surrounding, uh, the surrounding editor for meta boxes won't be the same. So meta boxes that are not self-contained can break. If, so if you have self-contained meta boxes, my understanding is that, that you will be able to continue using these. But if you have some that, that aren't and you have incompatibilities, you can actually explicitly mark them as incompatible when they're added and Gutenberg will notice that they're there and take, uh, take action to just load the classic editor so you don't, so you don't end up in a broken, broken space. And we have widgets. So widgets are, again, widgets are used to, to express surrounding content, like our sidebars, our footers, and that sort of thing. The, the vision is that widgets will eventually be replaced by blocks. So we don't have, we eliminate this, you know, we don't have to think in another term, in terms of some other structure to express content. 
in certain places in our site, we can just express blocks where we were expressing widgets. The same goes for menus. The idea is that menus will also eventually become blocks instead of being uh, their own special thing. So around Gutenberg, there are some opportunities we have. And these are, <laughs> these are from my limited imagination. I'm sure there's way, there, are way, uh, there are way more opportunities around this that, that others could think of. But the first is probably more, the most direct one is custom blocks. We, uh, there will be a place for, for custom blocks for special case things that aren't, that aren't supported directly by core and, and maybe don't want to be. <clears throat> and there's, 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 there will be the ability to uh, add plugins and, and package your own blocks. Also, as I mentioned before, themes that leverage Gutenberg features are an opportunity. Um, now for the, th the third point here, for, for improving experiences for agencies and customers, there's some other features that are being developed right now for being able to specify, like I kind of hinted at it looking at the prototypes, but page layouts and layouts where you can specify a set of blocks and you can lock those down. So either maybe you could lock down the blocks that are present and those blocks could be moved around by the, by the people editing or you could lock those down entirely and so you have to keep the block, you have the blocks you have and um, and are able to <clears throat> and are are able to just have people say fill in this content and don't make changes to this, and that might uh, that might provide a little more control and uh, it does provide more control and maybe help set expectations for what agencies can expect from their customers and what customers can expect when they they come and and try to use what um, what's been created as as a layout. A really interesting thing for me is, is how finding new ways to leverage the meaning of blocks. I know there, there's some work going on to see what this means from a search engine optimization perspective. You know, if you, if you can actually look at a page and, and know more about that page and what's there, that, that can provide uh, more information for, for search engine optimization. And there are ways maybe Maybe if, you, if you're looking at your articles in maybe a collection of articles, there are ways you can, you could, you could identify articles or types of articles just by what kinds of blocks they have in them. Um, I'm deferring to your imagination because <laughs> that's what I have today. But then also uh, around, around that is education. So both in using Gutenberg and also just education around how, how to leverage it um, as a developer. So if this interests you, how can, how can, and it interests me, how can we help? So for contributing, here's some ways we can contribute. We can install the Gutenberg plugin. We can get involved with testing it and filing issues on the, in the Gutenberg GitHub project. <clears throat> we could even test the latest that's on, you know, in Git. You can get, get into, you know, daily testing if you'd like. You can participate in design discussions, discussions around the design of, of Gutenberg and, and, the, and the user experience. You can get involved in development. Uh, there are plenty of, there are plenty of, you know, we're moving, moving fast with Gutenberg, but there are plenty of bugs to fix. There are plenty of issues to work on, new things to create. Uh, and um, internationalization here is another opportunity, but I'm, I'm not sure how ready that is right now. Uh, I'm just not certain, but eventually there, there will be an opportunity for people who want to help translating various uh, bits of text that are used in Gutenberg. And, and then just providing Gutenberg support. So answering others' questions is a great way to learn. So you can, you can help out on WordPress support forums and you can also look at questions that are, uh, that are added in GitHub and, and take a look and, and try to answer those yourself and make, make the experience better for others and yourself. Uh, here's some resources. This isn't meant to just be read here. This is more just to be available for for people who want to look look at the slides later. But there's a great there's a good Gutenberg, already a good Gutenberg handbook on WordPress.org. Uh, Gutenberg developments on GitHub. We have I have a link to the minimum viable product issue on Guten on on GitHub, so you can look at that. 
for some good examples, a Gutenberg starter theme that's ex starting to explore um, how themes can best leverage Gutenberg features. And then the last, the last one is just a um, good article about uh, someone's experience styling themes for Gutenberg. So thank you so much for coming to my talk. And uh, this, these, this is where you can find the slides. And I hope that's useful to you. And are there any questions? Um, you're asking if the theme, yeah, the, those are all links. Yeah. yeah, I should have clarified that, thank you. Oh, I, I thought I did. Uh, I, oh, <laughs> uh, there was, So, so how, how, how would it allow you to be responsive on mobile or just for? Um, I don't know for a fact about what, as far as for the default styles for Gutenberg, I, I'm, I'm guessing and my belief is that we're making a best effort to have you know, reasonable, simple, default responsive styles. But I think that would depend a lot on your theme. And so hopefully we'd, themes would be able to take the meaning, that are added, the meaning that's added by blocks and make make decisions about how you want to adjust for mobile. Cool. Sure. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if it's me, but I can't, <laughs> I didn't hear you. Okay, so the question is, do, um, does it have a built-in sort of column and row, um, row structure? That's, my, in my understanding, that's currently being built. There's nesting, the block nesting, which I, I was thinking about showing, but um, last time I tried it, it was, wasn't quite working right for me, so I, I decided to omit it from this talk, but there is block nesting that's going on, and you can, uh, I think the first experimental way is breaking your, breaking your post up into columns. And I think, I think it's inherently row-based already, but if you can break your post up into columns that then can nest other blocks, I think we're starting to get there. So I, I think there's an eye to that, but, um, we're, I think I think it's still in progress. Maybe even the next Gutenberg uh, point release, actually. Any other questions? Sure. Okay. Sure, okay, so I believe the question, and I'm gonna try to summarize because I didn't track all, all those things, but, or the, all the specific examples, but is it, is it going to be similar to a lot of the current visual page builders and offer those? So uh, I, I personally am not very familiar with the, what's currently available for visual page builders. Uh, I believe we're going to be pursuing, I think we're pursuing the best UX we can around just having, taking blocks in. I think, I think there are talk, there is talk about drag and drop and that sort of thing. I don't think that's there yet, but I, I think there's an eye, eye to that being as easy. I could, I could say that, I think. Sorry, I can't say more. But. Sure, um, I don't think, there's a, there's the, there's the make.wordpress.org blog, which I know has been having posts when Gutenberg has a new point release uh, that will list in great detail. I've actually spent very, when I'm trying to get f more familiar with all this, I've spent a lot of time looking through all these different things we've done, but it's, it's in great deal about the features that are being worked on. I think as we get, uh, as we get closer, I think you'll probably have my, my expectation would be more high level posts about what's going on. Currently, we're having more development level posts there, but make.wordpress.org is the, I believe is the core one. I think it might just be that, I, I thought I was able to look and just see that at the top level. It's in the neighborhood, sorry, I can't give you an exact answer there. 
Um, sure. I don't believe that's currently possible, but I, I believe the, the idea is, I mean, some, some of this is still like the dream, you know? And, and, so, um, and so we're trying to make that reality. So that, that would be the good example of something that, I don't, I don't know if that would be, I can't speak for the design perspective on it. That would be something that I would want as well. I don't know if that's going to be going into core or whether, whether that could be a cust even a custom block if it doesn't go into core where you can actually specify what you want the width to be and then that, that would be something you could do. Sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> Okay, so I think for those who couldn't hear, I think that the idea is that we, we do have columns right now. They don't, in, 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 in experience, don't, don't seem to be responsive yet. Uh, so that's, that's where we are. But, but, net, but column nesting, nesting blocks within columns is, is working. Okay, so the, the first question was how, how can uh, a, an average plugin developer, a theme developer, track Gutenberg development and sort of try to start targeting Gutenberg even while it's still a moving target? Um, and then the second, second question is, will there be a lag time between when it's merged and when it's released? Will there be a greater time than we're used to with releases? Uh, so for, for the first question, I think, the way, the way I'd be doing it personally is, is trying to track the, those posts on, on make.wordpress.org. There, there is a lot changing, and it's, it's honestly hard, and I've, I've just been starting to get into it over the last three to six months, and it's been, it's been challenging for me to track everything. And so my first strategy was not to track everything, <laughs> but tracking certain things that I care about and just trying and, and maybe making, doing experiments and starting, you know, even just maybe sketches in code about how I'd be integrating with things, and then maybe as things start firming up, I can take those sketches and, and make them a bit deeper. That's not wonderful advice, but that, that's the best coping strategy I think I would, I would suggest right now, and just paying attention to those blogs. And then for the second question in terms of the lag time with release, I definitely can't, can't have any, uh, give any authoritative uh, comment on that, but it certainly seems like a good idea with something that, that is making so many waves to um, to allow people uh, additional time to, to pause and reorient if they wish. Sure. <laughs> I think the idea is, is the rest of the percent, the re you know, and you can't, in, in no way can you ever please everyone. But I, I, think, I think the idea is that you can, so, oh, I forgot to repeat the question. The question is, what's the point? Or why, you know, what's the value in doing this? What problem are we really solving? Because we already have about 30%. We have one, I gotta, okay, I'm about, I gotta cut this off. So the idea, I would say, is that it, it does improve, I believe it would improve experience for existing users um, in, the, in the ways that I, that I talked about, but also for people who are using things like Wix or other sort of site builders to, to, give, to make that WordPress more accessible to them as well. So I think, I think that's the idea. I think I don't, we, we can talk, oh, sure. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>